All right, everyone, thank you for your patience. Tonight's event at the fabulous forum, a sellout, 15,587. 15,587 for a live gate of 2,168,675. 2,168, 675. Bonuses tonight, an instant, class, uh, instant classic tonight between Maestro Dung Young Kim, Polo Reyes, that'll take our yeah. fight of the night. He keeps on going. Dan Hendo, 50K. Yeah. And uh, Michael Bisbing, the last performance of the night. One note for you, uh, tonight we announced Conor McGregor versus Nate Diaz 2. That will take place August 20th, UFC 202. T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas is the destination. T-Mobile Arena. Danny Austin. Uh, Uriah, you, you spoke obviously in the Octagon about having to consider uh, your options going forward. Was that something you were thinking about prior to tonight's fight, or was that sort of just in, in the ring afterwards? Um, you know, this has been a long career, so you obviously think about things here and there and, um, you know, throughout time, and it's always kind of gauging how you feel in practice is the biggest thing. So um, I've always prided myself on, on being a guy that doesn't take much damage in fights, and and tonight I got caught a couple of times. It's you know not characteristic of me, so you got to give credit to Cruz for that. But also consider you know myself as as a as a guy that just turned 37 and, and in a tough sport. So um, <clears throat> you know it's also consider I was coming down from 163 from this thing. So uh, you know if if I do take another fight at 45s possibly, but uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do right right now. I want to go back and watch the fight. Uh, it's you know it's always kind of an instinctual fight fight for me, and I have to go back and and watch again to see exactly what happened because we're we're in there. It's like you know you're just going and going and going. So I'd like to go back and look at it and see you know how I look because honestly I got myself in amazing shape for that fight. I mean you always have bumps and bruises and little injuries in practice, but um, I did the things to get myself in tip top shape. I didn't feel like fatigue was an issue, but I did get caught a couple times and, and got out class in the fight and and uh, I don't like that, <laughs> you know. I mean I'm fighting a, a great fighter, but um, for me to to be out class, uh, you know, I gotta assess things. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna make any decisions. I know we have the new arena coming to Sacramento, so that's something I'll be very aware of and and. Uh, um, you know, that's kind of a dream come true to, to, to be in that thing there. So that's something to think about as well. But, you know, I, I love this sport. I love what I do. I've always loved fighting and combat, and, and I love to train hard, and, uh, but I want to be at my best. And then, Max, you, you were very clear that, you know, you wanted a, a title shot. Um, is that next for you? Because, I mean, there's a pretty clear path uh, in your division right now in terms of who will be fighting over the next six to eight months. Um, you know, how, how do you see it playing out? I don't know, you know, um, the interim belt is in uh, 200, and now we got Connor fighting at, what, weight, 70 again? Yes, sir. We see what happens, you know. If I got to go for 10, I'll go for 10. If UFC want to come to Hawaii, they can come to Hawaii with open arms and all. Been begging these guys to come down, so hashtag UFC Hawaii, guys. Let's get the show down there. I know all you guys want to go to paradise, so come on down. Uh, for Dave Schaller, please. Uh, yes, just with that note at 202, yeah. um, what impact does that have on the featherweight title right now? Is it is he remain champion for now and it's just on hold? What, what happens? So uh, that fight is still for the interim title. Uh, I think if you're Max Holloway and other guys at the top of the division, it does open things up. We haven't gotten that far yet. As Dana has said, Connor was absolutely obsessed with this 170-pound fight. And uh, Nate Diaz had no problem signing up for it again either. So I think the division is wide open right now. We'll see by the end of the year if, if Connor would like to return and fight the winner. Otherwise, I think it's a, it's a good night to be someone like Max Holloway. Great. And uh, the other big news, of course, Brock Lesnar uh, coming back at UFC 200. Uh, I don't know how much involved you were in that, but, I mean, obviously this is big news. He's been away for four years. Can you talk about maybe what you know as far as how that came together, how the decision was made, and what that means for him and WWE? Is this, is this a one-off? Is he coming back? What is this? So WWE put out a statement tonight that I saw, uh, but I will tell you I've been with the uh, UFC and the WEC for going on eight years now, and this is the first time that uh, – uh, news was a surprise to me, so I uh, met with Dana and Lorenzo in the back, and, and we're going to have some, some news here in the next couple of days, but I know the uh, MMA world is excited, I know the pro wrestling fans are excited, and I think uh, next 48 hours to uh, even a little bit longer will be really telling in the process. All right, and thanks, David. Obviously, it was a great night. Uh, one kind of uh, bad note, uh, we did hear about a handful of media members getting escorted out uh, towards the end of the night. Can you give us any insight as to what happened there, and is there any sure. statement from the UFC? No, I appreciate the, uh, the question, John. Out of respect to all the parties that were involved in that conversation, I'm not going to delve into the details.
Thanks, Dave. Uh, for Dominic, please, obviously a, a fantastic performance by you tonight. But the consensus in the early going was it seemed like maybe you were a little off, having a little trouble settling in. Were there any issues that you were dealing with, and did you feel a little bit off to, to start with? I mean, I got to go back and watch the fight. Like Faber said, it's kind of a whirlwind when you're in there, but I didn't feel off. I just knew I make adjustments on instinct, and he was coming really heavy in the first round. So I pushed the pace in the first round too, and I was just adjusting. I mean, I felt fine. Fantastic, thanks. And uh, for Dan Henderson, quickly, just A, can you talk about kind of what you remember from that opening round and, and you know, how hurt you were and what was just go going through your head at that point? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's always nicer to not to get hurt in that, that round. I know that uh, I felt like I, I hurt him a little bit and came in and he popped me. Next thing I know, I was on the ground. But, I mean, I was aware the whole time on the ground. Obviously, uh, I said, uh, shit. So, you know, I just knew I needed to recover and, and you know, try to get back up. And, and he, he kept on me. And, you know, I just uh, – he didn't hurt me to where I was not knowing what was going on. But he had me in trouble for a while. And, uh, you know, the second time I went down, you know, I, I feel like I remember being on my hand still and he threw a knee on my head and knocked me down again. And, and uh, I just – decided to hold on to him and recover and you know start in round two and you've always kind of brushed off the retirement questions but this is the first time you've really admitted hey maybe this is it can you talk to us about how you'll reach that decision what the process will be for you to make a choice uh you know i I'm just gonna I don't, I don't like uriah said i don't want to make any decisions emotionally but uh you know knowing that in my mind it, there's a possibility that that might have been the last one it was obviously a good one to have that and and all my kids and everybody were able to come so you know it was a little more emotional but uh yeah i don't know it, it all depends on what my options are afterwards obviously i'm going to need a paycheck uh for a little while but uh we'll see what happens dominic um were you surprised by how the fight played out was it was it the, did it follow the script that was in your mind before this i i try not to lay out a script except that i want to I want to win, and I'm always looking for the finish. You know, he's got a, a tough mindset, and I knew going into this fight, regardless of what anybody says, when you're fighting him, he's a tough fighter. I knew that. I said that before the fight. Just because I, th I, I believe in myself and believe I'm better than everybody in the division doesn't mean I don't give credit where credit's due. And he's got a championship mentality, so he's not going to go out easy. Everybody in, this, in these fights is tough. Uh, when you get to the top three of the division, top five of the division, you can drop guys several times. And they're never really out of the fight. Sometimes they get more dangerous. So you got to be careful how much you push and, and where you're at. And um, I would have liked to get him out of there. That's the only thing. But I got as close as I could, and I did the best I could at that. Whatever tactics you were using were muting his aggressiveness. What, were you, what would you say you did overall to do that? Well, in that first round, I just remember he was he, – I, I had a feeling he was going to come out very aggressive early. One, I told him the whole time before the fight, come, come at me come forward because the first fight we fought I felt like he backed up a lot more he's trying to read me more and I felt I felt he didn't respect my power I knew that and so um, I wanted him to come at me and he did and I was able to out grapple him in that first round I feel and I didn't see it I don't know what happened I just know that that first round I needed to kind of numb out his push a little bit and then from there I could build up a rhythm and build up a, a strategy on on piecing him up on the feet so that's just where it went. I had to make adjustments as the fight went on, like I always try to do. And um, I try to always shut down people's strengths and make them useless to them. Right. Uh, and Luke, I know you're disappointed. What do you think you're going to do from here? What's the, the conversation you have with the UFC about immediate rematch? Or what are you going to say? I'd love nothing more. You know, I, I believe I had control of that fight from the beginning. I just overcommitted. And, uh, and he caught me. Bisley's a tough dude. I've always said it. You know, he's a warrior. He'll, he'll hang in there. But I just, obviously, I didn't respect him enough. I was overcommitting. I tried something I, I usually normally don't do. I usually don't commit with a jab. I take my time and I work my way in. I got caught. Man, I guess destiny is real, but it's not going to last very long because I will have my belt back. I, I've dug myself up from the grave before many times that you've seen my losses and what I've done from them. If you check my record, 
I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm still on top of this game. I guarantee you give me that rematch, I will, I will put this man away. I will respect him more, but I will put him away, just like I did the first time. Thank you. Uh, over here, Luke, I have another question for you as well. Um, you know that people are going to say that you were overconfident going into it, and you just sort of alluded that to that a little bit. But um, in hindsight now, were you discounting Michael's skill set? Uh, I, Since I, you'd already beaten him, you know? I mean, man, you know, I, I knew what he was capable of. Uh, I just didn't <laughs> think that could, but, you know, I, I know this game is crazy, and, and, and it's MMA, and anything can happen. Um, I just got a little over aggressive uh, and and over committed with my jab. Something I don't normally do. If you watch my fights, I don't commit with a jab too much. Uh, you know, I wait, I, I play the game, I read my opponents, and it was just early. It was a, it, it was just a. Uh, I felt like I could see everything he was he was doing, and I just it was for some reason I wanted to implement a jab more. I was just using it in, in camp a lot, and I feel like I wanted to try something new and show something new. Whereas that's obviously not the best. Way to carry yourself when you're defending your title. Um, I stick to stick to what I'm, who I am, and and uh, stop trying to expand too much. You know, slow, slowly but surely. I, I feel like I'm still the best in the game, and uh, I I will prove that any time. And I will be back right here with the belt in front of me. When you defeated Chris Weidman, <clears throat> he had said something to the effect of. He was really frustrated at losing the belt to you in particular. Uh, <laughs> Try losing it to Michael Bisbee. That's what I was going to ask you. How do you feel? God, about that? <laughs> that guy is such a dick. I mean, you show your true colors after a fight, and that fucking guy comes up to me and says, "You know where you are." Huh? Like I fucking picked you up off the canvas and gave you respect. That guy's a piece of shit, and I want to fucking come kill him next time around. He's fucking. He's just a maggot. Coming, coming to me and saying like that, that those are true colors. Yeah. Michael, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed, Michael. Um, I just asked Luke if it stung any extra uh, degree in losing the belt to you, and he has said emphatically, yes, it did. Um, well, I'm curious. Well, good man down. Grab that microphone. Well, 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 how do you... I am the champion of the world, people. How do you feel... I say I told you so. Pick up the mic, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Hi, everybody. <laughs> how, how do you feel uh, getting revenge? Uh, oh, I know? don't know. Some say revenge is sweet. I disagree. I think it's better than sweet. Luke, come on, buddy. When the shoe was on the other foot, I leaned over and thanked you at this moment in time. I said, well done. Yeah, and I actually picked you up off the canvas. And you, being the dick you are, came up to me and was a bitch I shook about your it. hand. And, and you said, I already shook your hand and told me to fuck off, basically. You ask me, do you know who you are? Do you know where you are, buddy? Yeah, oh. that's after you. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you, you got knocked the fuck dick. out. You hey. got knocked out, buddy. Sit down, shut up. You got up. lucky. All right. You oh, lucky. yeah. Real lucky. Business. First round, buddy. First round. What an asshole, guys. I will come back and fucking kill you. Last question yeah, for okay. you. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. How's that jet lag, You buddy? enjoy your short-lived you destiny, my friend. All right. Yeah, yeah. It is my destiny. Mark my it words. It is my destiny, not your destiny. Dude, see, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're an incredible fighter, Luke. You really are, and I congratulate you for making me step up my game to come at you, you know, but, but don't be a dick. Michael, my, Hi. my last question to you is, you know, you believed in it being your destiny. How does it feel to actually finally have that in front of you after chasing it for so many years? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I want to thank everybody that, my family, of course, and people along the way that supported me, the, the UK crowd, um, the UFC fans all over the world. You know, I mean, this has been a lifetime's work and I always felt that I was capable of doing this. Um, you know, and I've had my ups and downs along the way and, and I understand why people, you know, didn't believe in me but because I'd lost some key fights and I, I accept that. Um, but I knew deep down inside myself that I, I could still always do it. And that's why I took this fight on short notice, you know, because as I said, leading into it, you know, that defines me. I am a fighter, you know, and, um, you know, I showed the world. I shocked the world. I was a 10 to 1 underdog. I got the job done. I do believe it was a knockout in the first round, and I do believe it was a uh, performance of the night bonus time. <laughs> 50 Gs, baby. Thanks, Luke. Uh, Luke, do you feel that training for Weidman an entire camp and then taking this fight on short notice is the reason why you stuck to a different game plan and did it affect you? entering this fight? No, it was more about me going out there and proving a point and just trying to trying to beat Bisbing and, and, and over committing and trying to work new things. I, it was if, if I go out there and I fight my fight, 
this man can't compete with me. You know, I, I, I'll prove that any time. I, si- I, I will be back. Did you say I, I can't compete back. with you? Is that what I heard, everybody? If I, did, if I do my Is that thing. what I heard? Did I, I was talking to you, Raya, and saying, well done. Is that what I heard? Did I hear him say, you I You say it now that you're in front of the press. <laughs> Dude. When we're man to man in the cage, we, shoot, we saw your true colors. We see who you are. You just said I can't compete with you. I just knocked you out in the first round. Cold. Have you seen that replay, buddy? Your head was bouncing around like a pinball machine. I watched it. Yeah, yeah, watch it again. Obviously, it didn't sink in. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, next question's for you. Whatever. Uriah it doesn't mentioned. matter. I live for the now. It doesn't matter about down the line, Congratulations. buddy. Congratulations. You just got knocked out. Uriah mentioned Cody Garbrandt. You obviously watch everyone in the division and a lot of fighters. Is that someone you're looking at already? I know he just had his first major test, but Uriah has done this before. You know, he lost a, a fight and then mentioned TJ Dillashaw right after. He ended up becoming champion. Kind of has an eye for these things. Is that someone you're looking at? I mean, I've heard that name before, um, but I think that that's somebody that Faber manages and collects a percentage off of when he fights, so that would make sense for him to mention him. But I saw him, and he, I just thought he was one of the new kids on the block. I don't, I don't know who he is. Dominic, question. Uh, you know who he is, dude. You guys got in a Twitter war. I don't know who he is, man. I just thought that was one of the new kids on the block tweeting me. Dominic, Cody Garbrandt's the champ, man. He's a stud. It has nothing to do with anything other than that. Nothing like you making a percentage off of when he gets good fights? No, nothing. Trust me, I make my own money. Yeah, off them, off your teammates, and then they ride your coattails. I feel like we're at the pre-fight press conference again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, hey. You want to fight the best guys? Trust me, I, I would like to say I'm the baddest dude in the, in the, in the gym, but, uh, you know, this is a sport where reality is reality, and, and we've got some killers in the gym. I've got guys that have been training me since they're 10 years old that are some of my top training partners that can put it on me, little guys like Joseph Morales and, and Angelo Trevino, and these kids that have been with me for years. So there's some talented guys, and... and don't I got, take any. I'm I got guys to take that can beat all them Cruz. up in my I'm gym saying, too. Matt Sales, guys are coming. Danny Martinez, Wilson Hayes, yeah, Jeremy share, Stevens. Share the love. The Feels list good goes to share on. the love, right? Yeah, it does. But the list goes on. I mean, I can do the same thing, except I don't collect a percentage when I promote these guys. They guys, make their guys, own money. Guys, come on, please. What? It's over. It's time you get, you who's talking? Inside of my Look who's life. Who's talking, Bisping? <laughs> the champ is Somebody speaking. ask Bisping a question so that he can get the love back, please. One more for Dominic. I agree. Hey, I wouldn't want to fight. Uh, the the new kid on the block either if I were you. I got no problem ahead, fighting right anybody and right I have no you're problem gonna, fighting you you're either. You're going to go ahead and ask a question Thank you. for us. For Dominic, uh, injuries have seemingly defined you for the last four years but it's amazing how you continue to rewrite history and redefine yourself as a fighter after really it seemed like you were all, all done with the, in, the three ACL tears, the turn quad. What does it mean to you to, to reclaim your spot? I know you did it in January, you did it again, do it again now but reclaim your spot atop the world of, of pro fighting. Look, I'm, I really, these fights are hard. All these fights are difficult. This fight tonight was difficult. I did well. I won. Thank God. I really thank God for it. But I want to be humble in defeat and humble when I win to an extent, you know? He's talking, so I'm talking back. That's how, I, how it goes. But the truth is, this division's on fire. My job is to come in here, be the champion, and now everybody's talking about 135 pounds. The, the, it is stacked right now. There's tons of guys in this division that look amazing to me, that are awesome. And uh, it fires me up. And I think the division's fired up for me coming back after a four-year layoff, winning the belt, defending the belt, and being here again. So the target's on my back. I can feel it. I love it. I bask in it. Bring it. Are you able to enjoy the moment, or is it, is it too overwhelming with, with so many opponents? Kind of I'm in the trenches. Back? I'm always in the trenches. I've been in the trenches this whole time. I was in the trenches on the desk analyzing fights, people saying that they were better than me. It's always been that way. It's never changed. People have always been calling me out. People have always been saying they're better than me. It's the way it, it's the way it is. It's part of being the best is dealing with that. And um, you just gotta, you just got to do it. I mean, I'm just dealing with it. Have faith in my abilities. Have faith in my instincts like I did tonight. You know, you're nervous going into all these fights. That's, that's your body telling you uh, it's a good thing, you know. That's your body trying to preserve you. You thank yourself for that stuff, and you move forward and believe in your instincts and have faith. And, you know, my higher power is God, and he gave me power through this time all these years. For Michael, please. Uh, obviously, coming in on short notice, you said, hey, you know, I, I do have the energy to go five rounds. I'm fine. But now that it's over, 
Can you give us an honest assessment of, you know, the type of shape you were in going in? And was there any kind of pressure to get this done early? Yeah, no, seriously, I was uh, in shape to do five rounds. Uh, I think, well, I know now. I've never taken a, f a short notice fight before. Um, I always overtrain, always. And every time I have a camp, I always talk about how I'm not going to overtrain this time. But it matters so much to me that I always overtrain. And my coaches are always telling me, no, don't do anything. And the next morning I go in, they say, what did you do last night? Did you rest? I'm like, well, yeah, but I went on a five-mile run just nice and easy. And they're like, Jesus Christ. You know, so as soon as I got off the plane from filming that movie, as soon as I got in the gym, I felt so strong. I felt amazing. And, and, and my cardio was good. And I was. I was, I was. I was able to go five rounds. And then when I was watching Luke, you know, we watched a bit of tape. And everything, every time he does something, he drops his right hand, you know. He was even doing some video on Instagram where he's doing this thing, and his his right hand drops. You drop your right hand all the time, buddy. So I was like, left hook, left hook all day long. The left hook that dropped Anderson, the left hook that won me this motherfucking world belt. Boom. You can call me left hook Larry from now on. There you go. Can you talk about what was going through your mind as the fight was playing out? Because it seemed like he was walking forward and showing you very little respect for your striking. Yeah, he, yeah, he doesn't have respect. You know, he doesn't have respect for many people, you know. So uh, I think he might have respect now. You know, might have a little bit of respect. We'll see about that. But uh, I always knew I had the punching power. I always knew I was capable of doing this. And, uh, you know, I said, two weeks' time, I'm gonna, in two weeks, how's it going to feel when I walk off a movie set and whoop your ass? And that's what I did. And I do believe in destiny. I do believe in the, the universe pulling it all together. Uh, I've worked my life towards this. I've worked tirelessly. I've worked very hard. I made a lot of sacrifices. Um, I quit work when I had a wife and two kids and we had no money. We were broke, but she supported me and let me do that. I moved away to another city. I slept in my car. You know, I've made so many sacrifices. I remember sleeping in my car and trying to open the door with this much snow on top of it that had froze and try to break my way out of a car to just go train in the morning. You know, so people don't know the road I've been on, you know. So, yeah, I, I know I'm a loud mouth idiot at times, you know, and... and, and I can be a dick, I know I can, but I'm just out there trying to look after my family, look after my children, and give them the best life possible with the only way I know I can. This is what I do, I fight. I don't do anything better in this world than fight, and thanks to everybody that supported me along the way. And lastly, Mike, I, I know you'll take some time to enjoy this moment, but of course, for when the champs are here, the, the next question is what, what's next? You know, you've got Weidman, you've got Jacare, it looks like there'd be some heat in a trilogy fight. Yeah. Um, what Thank does seem to make the most sense? Uh, you know what, to be honest, I'm just going to relish the moment. I think I deserve it. Ten years, I never got a title fight, and then I just knocked the bum out in the first round. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to relish this moment. I'm going to ride the crest of this wave. I'm going to have a few drinks. I'm not going to do a Tim Sylvia and walk around with this on constantly, but um, I do envision the mother of all hangovers coming my way pretty soon. Then after that, once that clears, once I drink some water, maybe take a couple of ibuprofen to get rid of the throbbing in my head. You know, I'll take a look at the landscape and see who wants knocking out next. Thanks, Mike. Uh, for Brian Ortega, if I could, uh, I was into it being a, a huge victory for you tonight. Uh, <laughs> a, a bit of a slow start, as you've had sometimes. But just to talk about your performance and, and just how you felt about the whole fight. Uh, I mean, I feel great, man. You know, um, looking up to Clay Guida my whole life as a kid, it wasn't easy facing someone that you admire. You know, that someone that every time you looked up, and when I was just a youngster, I was like, man, that guy's crazy. Like, look the way he bounces up, and he just does all these crazy things, and he puts on exciting fights. And I did start off slow, and, and part of it was just because I was in there, and I was like, holy shit, I'm fighting Clay Guida. It's like, um, you know, I was like, as a kid, you know, you're like, man, this, this is the guy I looked up to growing up. And then to actually be facing him and then hitting him and everything, you know, it was just, it took me a while to, to, to kick four, you know, get on all four cylinders going, and then finally I started moving more in the second round, third round, I felt great. I knew he had great cardio, but um, I mean, in the third round, I felt him just kind of tire out. I could see right through him, you know? I was like, man, he's tiring out. I said, so I better pick it all up. And then um, I got that knee in and then got that, got that KO. And it, it seemed like you were kind of overcome with emotion. Can you just talk about, I guess, what it was that, that got you so emotional after that win? Um, you know what, man? I've been going through a lot of things in life. Um, you know, um, just going through through a lot, man. And um, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, I just I try to stay quiet about it, you know. But, you know, some things happened in my life that, that kind of had my, my head messed up. And um, just all kinds of things coming at me and then having this fight in hometown. And then you think you want to fight at hometown until you realize how many hometown people bug you for free tickets or they want to be your cornerman or 
I got all kind of crazy requests, so so it, it was kind of stressful, you know. But uh, with everything going on, I still came in here and I did what I have to do. Thanks, Brian. And just last, if I could, for Dustin, uh, a great performance by you as well, obviously. Uh, Joe Rogan said it might have been the best of, of your run so far. I know it's early after, but but what do you think of that performance? Um, I'm, ha I'm happy with it, of course. You know, I got a first-round knockout, but um, I felt great. You know, coming into this fight, I felt very confident that I could put him away. Um, my body's still coming around, rebalancing out at 155 pounds. I'm feeling the power, you know, um, really coming back. Not that it really left, but I just feel like I'm, I'm balancing back out. I've been, I was sucking my body down and, and stopping it from growing and being where it wants to be. So now I feel natural. You know, when I get in the cage, I feel like how I feel in the gym. Before, I felt a little slower and a little bit unclear mentally. Now I feel aware and, and in the moment. And I know you said you want a big fight, and you certainly deserve a big fight, but I know you have a kid on the way as well. So map it out for us. What do you think the future holds? What, what makes sense for you next? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, in two months, my wife's giving birth to our fir first child, and I'm damn sure not going to be in a training camp uh, for that. So I'm going to sit back and enjoy this win and, and go home, become a father, and see what's next. I want a top, top five guy, you know. I've been asking for big fights. I feel like I'm getting better with every performance. I'm growing and maturing as a person and a fighter, man. I want big fights. I want to headline shows and make money. I want to put people away on, on top of pay-per-views. Let's do it. Uh, Dustin, I have another question for you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hi, 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 <laughs> Michael, you've been known as kind of the, the bad guy for quite a long time, but the crowd seems to kind of enjoy your... Humor, I do believe I got your, a bigger cheer than my the... opponent, no, uh, you know, so... Uh, but yeah, listen. I've gonna, done things to be considered a bad guy over the course of my career. I know I have. I've acted like an idiot, but I've grown and matured in front of the world, to be honest. You know, and I, I know I've said things. I look back and I cringe at some of the things I've said in the past. I might cringe at some of the things I said tonight. Uh, that's just how I am. I constantly make mistakes, but I try not to make the same one twice. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. What was your question? I was going to say, people kind of seem to like what they heard tonight. Would you be comfortable being a little, a little bit more of a crowd favourite moving forwards, or do you prefer being the bad guy? No, everybody wants to be liked. Come on, you know <laughs> I mean? But, you know, as a fighter, we're trying to generate interest. We're trying to generate hype. And, uh, of course, the bottom line is money. You know, and whether people like you, as long as there's some emotion on display, you know, uh, that is the main thing. The last thing you want is an indifferent clap when you walk in. Um, but of course, you always want that cheer. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think in the past, I was surrounded with the wrong people. They were encouraging me to make bad mistakes and, and to act a certain way. They were getting me to live up to the persona of the bad guy, if you will. But, um, you know, I've got, I've got a great team around me now. I've got a great, beautiful family. Life is good. I love living here in Southern California. I miss the UK dearly, of course. And, um, but yeah, listen, you know, life is good. And I, I try and have a smile on my face everywhere I go. You know, and that's why sometimes I say stupid shit because I'm always just being silly. I'm just having a laugh, you know, and sometimes it's taken out of context. But you're saying this is a nicer version of you? <laughs> you said you made mistakes before. What are you before. saying? I'm not, I'm asking. You said this is a bad <laughs> I'm version not of me? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think you're slightly calling me an asshole. You want to take a, good, a look at a proper asshole? <laughs> look to my right. Cheers, Mike. Take a couple more. Go ahead in the uh, front there. Um, one for Dustin, Dan, and then the participants of what is, seems to be Rock Called Bisping 3. Uh, Dustin, yeah. uh, you talked about afterwards having mouths to feed. I know you guys are expecting again real soon. Just want to know if you could talk a little bit about the mindset. Is that is that something that the pressure of, of, of fatherhood and family life, is that something you got to kind of block out uh, to not uh, – be tense in there or is it something you can use as motivation or a little of both I think a little of, of both um man I work so hard and, and dedicate so much of, of my time and and I'm very passionate about this I don't know if if it's possible to put any more into it you know I, I give it my all I really do but having a, a daughter coming man is if there's more to put I'm putting it you know I'm put, I'm giving it all always I always do but it's just um another thing to fight for I'm excited about it Thank you. It's it's always unfair to talk about rematches right after a big fight, after someone's earned a, a title. But given that you guys are already going back and forth, given that we just had a, a rubber match here tonight, a great fight, Michael, Luke, Dave, anyone that wants to chime in, any of you guys, is there any reason that 
that we shouldn't give Michael Bisping two months to promote a fight and do do a do a third match, do a, re, uh, a rematch of this one? Listen, you know, for, for everything that's said and done, I respect Luke a lot. I think he's a fantastic fighter, and we've had our ups and downs along the way. I have I have nothing against the guy. I really don't. And and he's an incredible fighter, and I want to thank him for bringing out the best in me. You know, because when you're faced with a challenge like that, you have to rise to a certain level. And I do. And I know for all the bullshit, Luke, come on. We're just two individuals trying to achieve greatness and, and be at the top of our game. So, you know, I'm being a little jovial right now. Of course, I'm in the best mood ever, so I'm, I'm being a little bit silly. But I respect Luke. I respect Luke greatly. And he has a victory over me, and I have one over him now. You know, there's no reason why we can't do a third one down the line. You know, I'd like to do a little victory tour and, uh, you know, maybe knock a couple of other people out in the meantime. You know, I'm Luke's, you know... Um, Definitely deserves a third fight. You know, let's be honest. You know, he, he's he's an incredible champion. He's pound for pound one of the best in the world. You know, there you go. I, I did well tonight. Oh, thanks. Last one for Dan. Unless Luke, you want to add something? Or um, but uh, look, Bisbing's a dick, but he's a warrior and he's tough. And he's gonna hang in there. I I gave him an opportunity and he made the most of it. Giving me an opportunity will be the end of it. And I think I, I think I've earned mine, but I will do whatever I need to do. But it, it will be a, a short-lived destiny. I promise you. You just can't let it go, can you? You just can't let it go. How those lemons taste? Hey, last one for uh, thanks, guys. Last one for for Dan Henderson. Um, I'm just curious. We, we've, we're way past, years and years past, you having anything to prove, right? Like, you, you were a Hall of Famer from your accomplishments a long, long time ago, yet you fought on and you've continued to win. I'm just curious, what makes it hard for, for a great athlete like yourself to walk away? Is it the, the love you get from the crowd like you got tonight? Is it, is it knowing that you can still go out there and beat anybody in the world any, any given night? Is it, is it financial? Like, what... What makes it hard to, to, to stop being an athlete? Is it an identity thing? Because, again, you have nothing to prove, and you haven't for a long time. Is it just that you love it so much? What would you say? Yeah, it's never been an identity thing. It, it, obviously, the money helps. I love, I love doing this, though, and, and I love getting paid to do it. And, uh, you know, for me, I think it's along the way been more about the challenge. And, and every opponent I get, it's a different challenge, and, and sometimes bigger, sometimes they're just different. And... Uh, yeah, I feel like as I've gotten older, it's it's a different type of challenge. You know, I'm 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 kind of uh, challenging myself with my opponent and, and and time as well. You know, I'm I'm definitely uh, older than well, I guess I, for a while I've been the oldest guy in the UFC, but older than the average guy fighting for sure. Um, but I, f I feel good. I'm I feel like I'm still capable of uh, competing with the top guys. Um, you know, it, it's more about what you know the other things I want to do in life and spending time with the kids, and and I managed to do that just fine uh, along the way. Uh, but you know, I'm getting close to being ready to to being done and and being okay with it. I've been okay with it for a while. I, you know, I, if I look back and and what I've done, I'm completely okay with it, and uh, you know, feel good about myself as well, and. You know, but we'll see. I'm not making any any uh, decisions now. I'm just going to wait and see what happens and, and see what my options are. Take two more. Go ahead, Simon. Question for Michael. Yes. No surprise there. Um, very few people get to win a UFC world title, um, but only one person can be the first, and you're the first British fighter to win a UFC world championship. Oh. That's... Thank you, Artie. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm getting a little choked up. Um, for those people who stayed up till gone yes. 6 a.m. back home, um, just just give them a message and just let them know just uh, you, how much it means and you, you know what it, what it is to you, right? You know, now. it's incredible. I really, really have felt the support from the UK. You have no idea the uh, the amount of tweets, the amount of messages, the amount of Facebook things. It's just incredible. And it's it's. I've said this all along, and I and I truly mean it with every. I mean every word I say. The support from the UK is part of the reason why I'm here right now. And everybody that stayed up to watch this fight, I thank you all personally. There was a flag that I was supposed to walk out with all the messages on. 
you know, uh, outfitting policy wouldn't allow it. So my apologies for that. Um, but as I said, the, the UK people and the UFC fans all over the world, but the UK, the, I, I hold the UK dear to my heart. And, and for everybody that stayed up and watched, thank you all so much. I can't wait to go back to the UK and bring this bad boy here. Um, yeah, thank you all, all dearly and so much. Uh, and for the record, that fight went just down like the sparring session that, you know, that is famous. So it's kind of 2-1, really. Um, question for, for Bisping. You said you'd uh, be willing to, uh, to uh, have a couple of opponents before a rematch with, uh, uh, with Luke Rockhold and uh, Gamance in here. Uh, oh, Jack yes. Ray, who I wonder wants. who. <laughs> yes, sit right here. Would you, uh, would you be okay with that first? And Luke, would you want the immediate rematch or sit, be able to sit back and, and, uh, and watch Bisping versus uh, Jack Ray potentially? Mm, who do you want an answer from? Both of you. You asked two people. Two weeks' notice. I'm ready. Oh. Doesn't matter. I, I think. Uh, Wasn't that my line? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's flip I the bet switch. you are. Let's but you just got switch. knocked out. I think you suspended. Yeah. Oh. For a little while, you're suspended, probably 90 days until you yeah. get your MRI 90 checked. 90 days, you take your vacation, I'll be bro, ready. Bro, 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 you're suspended, shut the fuck up. Um, Jack Ray, world-class opponent, nothing but respect. I, unlike this guy, don't turn down opponents. And if Jack Ray, he is the number one contender, and I've never turned down a fight in my life, and it would be an honor to share the octagon with him. He's, he's an incredible fighter, a true martial artist. And, of course, if that's what they want to do, that's what I'll do. Right now, I just want to be with my family. I want to rejoice in this moment. I'm going to take a vacation. I'm flying to Thailand with my kids. I'm going to rent a big, beautiful villa and just going to enjoy. But Jack Array is an amazing fighter and it would be an honor to share the octagon. But I just got to say, you got to watch out for that left hook, boys. Last question. Um, for both Dom and Uriah, at the end of the fight, uh, you stood and looked at each other for a second. And I was going to ask if it's time to bury that hatchet, but... Uh, after listening to the two of you now, will you ever, ever be able to? Yeah, I don't mind. You know, it's been an interesting relationship throughout the years. We've we've been uh, locked in PR arrangements where we've had to work as a team. We've had to, you know, you know, share the disappointment of of injuries and and missed opportunities. Um, there's been a lot of, you know basically getting to know each other. I feel like he's grown up a lot since since the original days of, of me thinking he was just a little punk. I, I think he's he's grown he really has grown up a lot um, and has gotten better as a fighter as well. So, uh, you know, the truth is, though, our, our team is full of killers, like I talked about. So there's always going to be that that rivalry there. And and, uh, you know, I feel like we've made up at points for like a day and then and then it just goes right back to some negativity. So uh, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but uh, Dom's, Dom's okay. I, it's just funny listening to that. I don't know. Um, we, we have. It's been a crazy roller coaster. You know, I'm glad that obviously I could come out winning and holding the belt after everything I've been through. It's been a crazy few years, and I've done really well against anybody from his team every single time. Um, I think that I have a lot of killers at my gym too, and I think that everybody at Alliance Training Center that I that I work out with gets me ready to beat everybody he's ever trained himself and everybody that I've beaten. They've all helped me win. I didn't do this by myself. When I was at, uh, getting built up for the years, you know, coaching these guys, training these guys, um, I watched them to get better so I could come back with the eyes I needed to still be the best. Wilson Hayes, Danny Martinez, Rolando Perez, Jeremy Stevens, Matt Sales. I mean, I, Teco, Masio. The list goes on with the guys that I got to get me ready. Polo that just had the fight of the century. Guy's a monster. I mean, these guys all get me ready. So it's not just me out here. Um, and, uh, you know, I, like I said, I don't make any percentage off any of these guys. They just help me get ready. And I love them. And that's it. I make no money off any of them. He does. Our team is funded by our fighters. We have coaching staff, and it's a losing venture. If you want to take over, I'll, I'll hand it over gladly. <laughs> it is a losing venture for you guys against me. I have a feeling this will never We'll end. see. <laughs> On that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much to the forum and their staff. Have a great night.
July 9th, UFC 200 makes history with three championship fights in one night. Light heavyweight king Daniel Cormier meets interim champ John Jones. Plus, former champions Frankie Edgar and Jose Aldo battle for the interim featherweight title. And Misha Tate defends her bantamweight belt against dangerous Brazilian Amanda Nunes. UFC 200 at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Tickets on sale now at...